All right, is everybody here? Yeah, yeah, scooch over here so you can all hear it easily. <laughs> well, let me let me introduce um, Jeff here. So Jeff Sikic is one of our biologists and uh, he heads up. <laughs> He's trying to hide the back. <laughs> all of the field work on the Mount Lion project and has been really involved here at Liberty Canyon um, for a long time with this project as well. So yeah, so, I, so maybe I've talked a lot, so. You want to talk some? I guess one question someone had was, "What is the timeline?" Oh yeah. Oh, I know. You can talk about telemetry too. Yeah. yeah. So the timeline is around three years to build it. So, um, 2025 we're looking at. Um, you know, hoping nothing hangs it up that much. But yeah, we're looking at around 2025. Um, someone also asked why this location. So this is one of our last remaining spots in the Santa Monica Mountains where we have natural protected habitat on both sides leading up to the freeway. And so it's a, this ideal pinch point. You know, if you look on Google Earth from the sky above, you know, you'll notice this nice pinch point of habitat. And then you also look at all of our radio collar data from different species, not only mountain lions, but coyotes, bobcat and deer. And we have those locations coming up to the freeway on both sides right here. Um, the other decent spot where we have natural habitat on both sides is out by you guys out west down the Conejo grade area around there. And so we've had some locations along the 101 where mountain lions have successfully crossed. And one of those is right here at Liberty Canyon where we've had a few lucky passes. Um, where they just ran over the freeway, we believe, and got lucky, but also um, near the Conejo grade. But most animals, and as Seth mentioned earlier, and we know this from the um, close inbreeding we've been documenting and the, the real low genetic diversity, don't even attempt to cross. Um, the 101 is such a formidable barrier, over 300,000 vehicles a day. Um, so we've been intensely monitoring this area for um, a number of years now. Uh, the past couple years, we did two years monitoring not only Liberty Canyon Road underpassing here and then a long dark culvert, but also eight other potential crossing structures in this area in a few miles, a seven mile stretch, I believe it is. Um, so nine crossing structures in total and basically um, not many of them are functional. Um, we're not having many animals use them at all. Um, you know, some of the culverts, raccoons and skunks. Um, Liberty Canyon Road here, I think we've had a couple confirmed coyote detections going through and then some deer. Um, but for the most part, many animals aren't even attempting to cross. And besides monitoring these existing crossing points with remote cameras, we also have remote cameras on both sides of the freeway. So right now we have 17 and we've been monitoring this area intensely for the past seven years. I'm right here at Liberty Canyon. We pretty much get all species up to the freeway on, on both sides. And even right right close there. Yeah, one, yeah. Even north of Agora Road, that small little patch with the oaks are, that restored area. Um, we've had collared bobcats and we're spending a lot of time there. Coyotes, deer, and even mountain lions occasionally cruising through there. Um, and then right now we have one of our lions adult female p77 who lives in the simi hills north of the freeway um, with her radio collar it's a gps radio collar so we have a program to take eight locations a day i came in later so i don't know if you've talked about the collars but they haven't no. basically um we get a location from the mountain lions every two hours at night from 6 p.m to 6 a.m when they're most active um, and then one daytime location at 2 p.m but also that radio collar also sends out a very high frequency, a VHF signal that we can plug into our receiver and track them in, in real time. Um, so if that collar drops off or the GPS fails um, or that animal dies, we can hike in and um, follow that animal with this frequency. But I looked at her GPS points earlier. She was a little north of here, up in Las Virginas Canyon. Um, I thought if we might be up higher, we might be able to ping over that mountain, but I doubt we'll hear it, it'd be cool if we did. And then, yeah, I don't hear anything. Um, when you do hear an animal, or when you do hear that radio collar, each collar has a specific frequency to it that I type in. Um, you hear it as uh, 60 beats per minute, so a bing, bing, and this is a directional antenna, so it'd be loudest 
and a more crisp signal in the direction you're facing it and then it'll fade as you move away. So um, before the GPS technology, all these collars, back in my day when I started, <laughs> we um, had to go out there and uh, every day snow with uh, socks on only. But you know, and track them and triangulate on those animals. So we would, um, you know, we still do that when GPS. You know, it's all technology that fails occasionally, and um, it gets better and better every year. But um, we do still go out there and triangulate on animals where we take bearings from different locations and where those bearings intersect um, is where that animal is. Do you want to talk about what we're seeing on the crossing there right now? Or um, cars going there, no bridge <laughs> over it yet, come back in 2025. But yeah, you can see there's pillars right in the median there um, that are in the ground and they we're going to be soon working on the abutments on north and south of the freeway, but that's going to be the location. Um, the, the wildlife crossing will be, what is it, 170 feet wide, mm -hmm. roughly. Um, it's going to, you can see the slope north of the freeway there. It's going to be coming right from there, up and over, and also over Agora Road, right where that white truck is and that other car. So it's going to go over that section too because right we didn't want to drop animals right in front of another road so we're going over that and then it's going to drop down there's a stream below us in the oaks there um, and so it's going to drop down that south end right before that stream so what will the crossing be vegetated with because like you don't want to put an oak tree on it because it'll like break the concrete yeah right? you but... want to talk about that set? um species sure but, uh, yeah either way i mean uh, so there's gonna be soil on there i mean it'd be great if you could put oaks but we only gonna have three or four feet it's interesting because caltrans i mean caltrans has been a great partner but at the same time they're sort of like they've never built a, they've built lots of bridges but not, <laughs> not for animals right they build bridges for roads and people and whatever right so it's a whole new thing for them you know especially for the engineer right the biologists are sure if they get it right so but yeah, so so it's gonna be it's gonna be really wide. It's gonna be as wide as you can see there. Is that wide enough? What do you guys think? Sometimes I wake up and I'm in the middle of the night and I'm like, it's not wide enough. <laughs> but even so, even but this one already cost ninety million dollars. You know what I mean? So it's like, but um, no, we we think we're we're very confident that it will it will get used and used regularly by by all these things: deer, coyotes, bobcats, mountain lions. You know, and as I said before, like we don't need all of them to use it, and we don't need to use it a ton to make a big difference from a genetic point of view, right? So, but yeah, so it's going to be there's going to be three or four feet of soil, and so we're going to plant basically. And this isn't we're not the plant people, so, um, but we have a whole restoration program. Actually, that's a whole other yep. whole other yep. you know lecture, but um, where we try to remove invasives and plant natives, and that's a whole program too. Um, but we actually have a special nursery. So we have a nursery out at Rancho Sierra Vista um, out towards you all, but then we have a new nursery that's just gone in um, just a little bit to the east off of Las Vegas that's specifically growing plants to put on the crossing. Um, and so the plan is to, the hope is to have it look as, as much as possible like where we are now and on the other side. I mean, the truth is the other side is not great. It's a lot of sort of invasive grassland. So we're actually hoping in the long run it looks even better than it does now, right? It looks more like, you know, like what we see up on the hillside back there um, with nice coastal sage scrub and chaparral. And so, but those are the communities we're gonna plant is coastal sage scrub and chaparral. Um, and then there'll be some bare open areas too. So, it, you know, it's gonna be a whole mix. And the hope is again, that it's going to work for all the different species, right? From the lizards to the birds, to the Bobcats to the deer to the mountain lions. Um, so, and as anyone who you know sort of does plants and restoration knows, you you sort of do your best, and then you know nature happens, right? So like we'll we'll plant stuff on there, and definitely work hard. And I think in the plant you know, we'll we'll ir have to irrigate it for sure at the beginning. Um, but yeah, so that's the plan is that it'll be you know hopefully similar to what we what we see here, chamise and purple sage and black sage and um, California sagebrush and uh, coyote brush and, you know, sort of all those typical things. Yeah. 
No people. No, no, no people on the on the crossing. Um, right. Yeah. So that that's the plan. <laughs> Although the truth is, it's not like we can keep Fence them off, off the crossing. Right. Because right. we need the animals to be able to use it. Right. So. But 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 no dedicated trails. There will not be a trail. Yeah. And the hope is, you know, what 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 we say is that it's not a you know it's not for people. It's for the wildlife. Um, and whatever. If I'm sure some people will come check it out. And that won't be the end of the world unless it's too many. But we will be monitoring, just like Jeff said, we've been monitoring beforehand. We'll be doing a ton of monitoring during, well, post-construction, right? So we'll we'll be monitoring how many people are up there. I'll have some little um, about that. Yeah, potentially, especially if it starts to become an issue. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, the plan is for it to be, you know, dedicated for the animals. And then another strategy to get animals to use it, this is common with many different crossing structures, we'll have fencing on both sides of the freeway to funnel the animals to it. Wildlife food fencing, ideally really close to the freeway, um, and that'll act as a funnel for animals to, to find it as well. Um, and something really cool that's going to be on both sides of the crossing, and I'm not sure yet, how far exactly it's going to extend, but these um, gabion earthen walls. So it'll be um, with soil, vegetation will grow, and that will help absorb sound from the freeway for animals that are approaching um, from the approach angles and um, and reduce um, light as well um, for those critters as they're approaching. Because right now you can see it's very loud from here, and, <laughs> yeah. and at night there's a constant flow as well. But as I mentioned earlier, you know, the animals are already here on both sides. P12 that Seth mentioned early, earlier in his talk came right down that ridge line right there. And then ended up, you know, two hour gap between points. We don't know exactly where he crossed, but ended up right here. Um, since then as well, we've had a number of, a few lines, not a number, a few lines that have crossed in this area with one location right where we're standing here and below us in the Oaks and the next one north of the pools. This, this area is already um, being used by many different species. Especially for the mountain lions, they're not crossing. How many feet will that wildlife fence be? Like on the other side? Yeah, so we hope to go from this side, the wildlife proof fence will go to Chesboro Road, which is the next exit to the west. And then to the east, there's a community north of the freeway there towards um, Lost Hills Road. Okay. And, yeah, yeah. So really it'll be go all the way. Yes. Yeah. Really exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also important to note uh, that um, you know sometimes we get we get caught up in the in the awesomeness of the the cool stuff that's happening, and we forget about all the hard work. So the reason this is here is because these guys have been doing this monitoring for decades now, right? And the parcel on the other side, which was originally slated to be a, a mini city by the county of LA, that that effort was defeated and then defeated again and then finally defeated a third time. And so that's open space. The little parcels of land right here where the, where the physical pilings are going on, right, also needed to be acquired and there's some triangular property there's all the stuff that doesn't always make the news and when you do it it seems like oh my god did i i worked a, a huge amount of time to whatever save this parcel or do this thing did it really matter and sometimes we need this perspective of time and all those things together were necessary to convince people to spend the money and 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 do this and so so this is um a huge undertaking for for decades and decades to get this uh, cool structure going on here yeah no that's a really good point sean because so the land we're standing on now sort of everything in throughout the whole area i didn't sort of show this map and maybe i should have but the administrative boundary of our park is big 150,000 acres the whole santa monica's but as sean was sort of mentioning at the beginning we only own about um you know, about 30,000 acres, so so only like a sixth of it. But there's a bunch of big state parks, and then there's the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, which is a local conservancy, and they have a bunch of it. And so the, over half, about 60% of that 150,000 is publicly owned by somebody. So this land we're standing on right now is owned by the Santa Monica Mountains Conservancy, and then the land on the other side is owned by them as well. And they're the ones that are gonna maintain the, you know, the vegetation on the top as well. Um, but it's interesting, we, I saw this 
brochure that they made in 1983, so 40 yeah. years ago. Yeah. And it was about the mount, the wildlife of the Santa Monica Mountains, and there was a big, like right in the middle, they had this big map of the Santa Monicas, and there was a circle around right here at Liberty Canyon. Because even 40 years ago, you they, they knew that connectivity was potentially a concern, and they knew like this was, because already the freeway was a big development corridor, right? This was kind of the last place. Uh, but it's taken 40, like at that time they didn't own this property or that property. So as Sean said, it's taken a long time by lots of different agencies to preserve these areas, to do the science that we've done, like Sean said. Um, and then and then it's been 10 years actually just right. in the terms of the project right. of getting the crossing right. done. You know, we've actually been, this doesn't sort of, people don't remember, but we actually applied with Caltrans. I just found we're moving our offices and I found a letter the other day from Xavier Slavsky, who is a former board of supervisors in LA County. We applied with Caltrans in 2010. So, um, you know, so 13 years ago to put a tunnel under, under kind of right where that Liberty Canyon road sign is. Um, and we ended up, we were pretty close. We ended up not getting it. It went to some other project in Northern California. All, all of our local elected officials were quite bitter about it. But, um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we've been trying to do something for a long time, you know, and a tunnel would still be certainly better than what we have now. Uh, it would not be nearly as good as what we're gonna do because that tunnel would be super long, right? It would be 300 and something feet long. And so things like, and it could only be so wide, um, the only way to make like a big, huge tunnel that would work for everything is to, to close the, cut the, cut, cut the freeway basically and close the freeway, which is just not, not gonna happen, right? And so you could punch a tunnel through, but it wouldn't work for like for deer, for example. Um, but this big vegetated overpass, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna be effective for the whole range of different species. You said the conservancy is responsible for the vegetation. Right. Who's responsible? Is that Caltrans? The it's bridge is Caltrans's. But it is. It is so the bridge structure is theirs, but the top is the conservancy, right? Because hmm. Caltrans doesn't do like plant. Well, actually, no, that's not true. They sometimes do, they but do like um, but but that's more of the conservancy to do that stuff. But yeah, the bridge itself will be owned by Caltrans. Although, I'm um, actually so the bridge over or the so there's going to be a bridge over Agura Road here too. I'm not actually sure who County maybe? owns that structure. <laughs> it's yeah. a good question. Yeah. So the dirt is owned by the, the, the dirt, dirt. <laughs> the dirt and the plants. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. but they're man. They're going to yeah. manage. Yeah. Yeah. Are they the one doing all the planting? They um, they were Park well, and us. Yeah, and together with us. Park yeah, Park. yeah. I think it's also really important to note. I know people are getting ready to bail for class and stuff, and I get it, but um. I'll just note that um, it's really awesome that we also have all these partners doing this monitoring, because even if this totally fails, it won't, but even if this totally fails, as you've heard, this is just the start, right? Our next one's gonna be over on the, on the Conejo grade, um, but then many other crossings around, and as Seth and, his, and, and, and all of the research shows, some critters like to go down, some critters like to go over, all this and that, and so the more we know, the more we'll be able to fine tune and refine those next crossings. And so this is a learning process. And so it's awesome that we have such great science going on here because it's transparent, right? In some cases, some of our conservation stuff happens out of sight, out of mind. And when stuff doesn't go well for understandable reasons, people don't want to don't want to say it failed. And we don't learn from that. This is a very public entity. This is a very public activity. And so um, we're going to learn a lot how to do the next generation of crossings from all the work these guys are doing, which is really cool. Yeah. Other questions? I know people I want to bail for class, but, but other questions you guys have or things you're wondering about? Timeline? Most of the construction is happening at night. It is more so, yeah. So you guys won't see it in the daytime, but if you come by, if you go out to a movie or birthday party in LA or something come home you'll see like big lights at and night and you might have some traffic just so you, you might know. have some traffic yeah because they're closing some of the lanes they're never going to close the whole freeway but they are going to close one side some of the time like when they come in so after they so they're going to do the abutments over the next few months and then like late summer maybe they're going to start putting girders that are going to uh, connect the abutments to the pillars um, so you'll start to see the actual bridge 
So for some of that, they're gonna have to close half of it, but then you'll be routed. You know, if you're going the one direction that's closed, you'll be down here on Agura Road, actually. Cool. Um, but they're never gonna close the whole thing. Um, yeah. Awesome. Last question for these guys, you guys? Oh, yeah, I have a quick question. Do we have to wait and see if this is uh, more of a success to build other crossings, or other crossings already be like in process soon? Yeah, I mean, so there's, you know, Seth mentioned some of the other, in its talk, some of the other crossings, you know, especially in Europe and, and Banff, um, we're kind of behind the times in the States here, but more of these are being put up. Um, the cool thing with this crossing in particular too, is we have so much pre-construction data and science, you know, going back decades. You know, our carnivore study started right here at Liberty Canyon back in 1996, before Seth and I were here with the radio calling the coyotes and bobcats, knowing this is important. So um, besides the movement data, GPS following many species, we've also collected genetic data from many different species on either side of the freeway. So once this is built, we'll be intensely monitoring it as well, but also taking samples and looking at the genetics in years after as well to see how successful you know, it was. Um, but people aren't gonna necessarily wait for this one to do other ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, as Jeff said, there's lots of ones in other places, and so we know that they work, basically. Um, I mean, no one has ever done one this big in this serb in a place, so yeah, so I don't know. Um, and I, no one's planning to do one quite, you know, quite this big yet, so I don't, maybe people would wanna, but the thing is, um, it take, can take a while. You know, Jeff said we're gonna do all this post-construction monitoring, but that can take a while sometimes. Um, so, you know, I think, like I said, we know that they are effective already, and so people wouldn't necessarily wait, I think, we've, to do other ones. Yeah. We've studied, we've had other road ecology projects in this area, what, six other freeway projects around, 405, 5, 118, State Route 23, the 5 freeway. And so we know these, what these animals are capable of. And some of these structures that they do use are quite amazing, you know, these small little tunnels and, um, you know, culverts and, and, you know, they're just not using them enough, depending on the size and the length and the openness ratio of it. Um, and that's lacking right here, you know, by monitoring what we do have here. Um, so, you know, with something much better here, we're pretty confident animals will use it. Well, the property on either side is already protected and preserved. Um, overall, it's been very positive from the public. Um, but yes, with any project, you definitely have some folks that aren't fans. Um, some of those are nearby residents that you know, they don't necessarily want the construction. Um, some were early on where they just didn't know, you know, are we going to cut the ribbon and all of a sudden a a sea of lions are going to come in and uh, so after a lot of public education not only from us but from the National Wildlife Federation and other organizations educating the public on what this crossing will will be and that we're not you know lions are already here um, other wildlife are already in this area so it's not going to increase the population in this area. Yeah, and in terms of development proposals, like Jeff said, mostly things are things are relatively built out in the Santa Monica. So there, you know, I mean, there are certainly things always happening where people are proposing development, but there wasn't anything like right here that this was stopping, if that makes sense. You know, so yeah. I want to a long policy class that our professor Dr. Reinemann took us to one of the. Hearings they had oh, yeah. about the proposed development, and we all like, eventually got to talk about like, how we were in support of it. Great. But there, and then <laughs> I remember was somebody coming in. What was the project? What was the project? It was for this. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Um, but then I also Where was remember, that? Uh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Were we there? I, I, probably. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, <laughs> uh, but then I also remember there was like weird talks about like residents worried about like bringing mountain lions into their backyard and right. stuff yeah. and yeah. like yeah. worried about their cats and their dogs. Right. Well, we remind people they're already here. Yeah. 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 
P95 we caught on that mountain top right there, you know, and there's a community of homes. I mean, it, these mountain lions use every square inch, you know, they require a lot of habitat. So the, the, the animals are already here, they've been here, um, especially with mountain lions in particular, you know, there's a carrying capacity in any given area. So, um, you know, this is just gonna potentially help with gene flow.